one of those really beautiful, bright and sunny mornings when my kitchen is flooded with sunlight. It's all over the counter, you can't see it. But this just makes me so happy and it only lasts for such a short period of time. If I wake up early enough, I catch it, it moves right across the counter and then it's gone. So that's my motivation to wake up early. Coffee time. People still ask me every single day how we make our coffee and we just brew hot coffee in our Smeg coffee machine. We let it cool, we pour it into this craft, we chill it in the fridge, and then the next day we pour it over ice. Where's the sun? Where's the sun? There it is. I'm wearing this really cute new jumpsuit today from Outer Known. I want to show you. This is the cooler that I've been sleeping with next to my bed. And I've been putting my pumped milk in when I pump before bed. I'm gonna transfer it to a bag for the freezer now. But, what did I wanna say? So I finally have dropped my middle of the night pumping session, which is really exciting because I kept saying to people, by the way, I'm being quiet because Milo's taking a nap. I kept saying to people one of the hardest parts about breastfeeding and about pumping is that even once your baby starts to sleep for longer stretches and you know they might be sleeping through the night, you still have to wake up to pump, which is frustrating when you're exhausted. Milo's last feed these days, and right now he's just about four months, so his last feed these days is around 7 p.m. He goes to bed around eight. I pump myself one more time before I go to bed, so usually around like 11 p.m. I pump. And then I had been waking up at like three or 4 a.m. to pump. My friend basically was just teaching me about the whole concept of breastfeeding and how it basically is like supply and demand. So if you are pumping at that time overnight, you're basically telling your body that the baby's eating at that time. So then your body's gonna continue to produce milk at that time. We did like a few days of kind of weaning me off of that pump session, I would say. I was timing it and I was pumping for like five minutes when I woke up just to relieve the pressure. Then I lowered it to three minutes and then two minutes. And then I was doing two minutes I was doing two minutes for a little while, like a week or so. It was just, I kept waking up feeling like I needed to do those two minutes. And then eventually one day my friend just suggested that I just don't do it. By the way, I'm not recommending you do this because I know this can maybe cause mastitis, but I just kind of forced myself not to pump for a couple of days in a row. And eventually, like after those couple of days of not pumping, I was able to comfortably make it until 7 a.m. before I felt the need to pump. So now I do that last pump at about 11 before I go to bed, and then I'm good to sleep through the night until 7 a.m. and I set my alarm for 7 a.m. I have to say, once that alarm goes off, I am ready to go. And thankfully I sleep with like a little pumping station next to the bed, so the pumps are ready to go, they're fully charged. Stick them in my bra, turn them on, go. And I do about 15 to 20 minutes in the morning at seven o'clock. I put it right into a bottle next to my bedside and that's what Michael feeds him with for his morning feed at eight. So I'm really happy to report that my nighttime pump session is over because that was truly devastating for my sleep. <laughs> I've probably mentioned this before, but 
I'm the first of most of my friends to have a baby. So because of that, I just don't have many friends right now that are also moms. I do have a couple. That being said, I don't have like a ton of close friends near me that also have babies that are around the same age as Milo. Just last week, I was thinking about this and I was saying to Michael, I need mom friends, I need mom friends. And the same day I said, I need mom friends, I got a text message from a friend who knows a friend, who knows a friend, who had a baby, you know, seven or eight weeks ago in New York. And she somehow knew at least 10 other new moms who had babies around the same age. I think it was all just friends of friends. It was not like she had so many friends. It was just friends of friends of friends, which I guess is how all this stuff happens. And she started a text message thread with, you know, 10 to 15 of us who all happen to be around the exact same age. We all have babies within a few months of each other. And she basically said, I wanna start a little DIY mommy and me play group. We'll all bring our lunch and the babies and we'll meet at this spot. I did it for the first time last week with Milo and it happened to be Milo and seven baby girls. So he's the only boy in the group as of now. I think this coming week, there's gonna be another boy, but it was phenomenal. Like I cannot express how much fun it was to get together with other people around my age who are at the same stage of life because none of my friends, as I mentioned, from high school or college, nobody has a baby and few of them are even married. So it was really, really nice to get to know some new moms. And now we're starting this mommy and me group. And every Tuesday at noon, that's what I'm going to be doing with you. And I highly encourage any new moms out there, it's just a game changer to meet other moms who are in the same stage of life. So ask around for your friends, find friends of friends of friends of friends and start a DIY group every week because it just brought so much joy to my week. I feel like he's your twin. Twins. Mm -hmm. I already have a twin. You stole her stuff. It's always a mess in my kitchen now that I have these pump and bottle parts everywhere. I just am constantly cleaning, re-cleaning, then it gets messy and I clean again. I'm putting you down for a second so I can show you my new reusable paper towels. This is a new tripod. I don't know how to use it. What? It's still not working. No, I just don't know how to tilt it back. Do you know what I'm saying? Huh. I'm so confused. <laughs> Cut. Okay, we're back. My new favorite reusable paper towel brand, Papaya Reusables, is sponsoring today's video, so thank you so much for partnering with me. You all know probably that I love partnering with cleaning related companies because it just helps me have an excuse to keep my house clean. And especially now with the baby, and as I mentioned, with all these bottle and pump parts and using a bath every night, like there's so many things in my house now that make it so that I feel like I need to be on top of cleaning. A quick tutorial and demonstration. Essentially, this is a pretty rigid, hard piece of dried cloth. You run it under the sink and you wet it and you wring it out and then it works just like a paper towel except it's a lot thicker so it's more absorbent it works really well for like hefty spills but it also can just be used for general cleaning this one sheet replaces 17 rolls of paper towels papaya reusable paper towels are all natural they're compostable they're antibacterial and I think what sets them apart from most of the other reusable paper towels out there is that they come with this hook and it's a very minimal sleek white hook and as soon as you're done using this, you wring it out and you hang it on the hook to dry. You know, the ones that don't have hooks, you just kind of like wring them out and then leave them in the bottom of the sink and they wind up staying wet, collecting mildew and starting to smell bad. So we have one in our kitchen that I just set up right next to this little drying station. In my bathroom, I put one of these inside of the cabinet and it's really easy for me when I'm cleaning my glass and my mirror, it gets really dirty. And lastly, I put another black and white one inside the little insert in Milo's bath. So if you're interested in trying a papaya reusable paper towel, I will put the link for you down below, but the code, all caps, LUCY20, will get you 20% off your entire order. Check them out, let me know what you think. I gotta keep cleaning. Manzana, limon, naranja, fresa, piña, banana, uvas, Zanoria, tomate, fresas, maíz. Manzana, limón, naranja, fresa, piña, banana, uvas, pera, zanoria, tomate, 
pressas, mas... Okay, I'm taking a little workday break over here and having some apples and peanut butter. And I'm gonna take you into my bedroom for one second because I have a story. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Oh, and I'm also pumping right now. I don't know if you can hear it. It's kind of quiet, but I have a story that I wanna share with YouTube. I posted a TikTok today and shared this with TikTok and I just need to share with YouTube because you guys are my favorite people. Don't tell TikTok that. My parents have been married since 1973. So next year is their 50th wedding anniversary. They met one another in high school. They were actually introduced by a mutual friend who was a man named Donald, Donald Levy. He was the most fabulous human you could ever imagine. Just the most warm, loving, kind, generous, gentle man. And he was both of my parents' best friends. So the three of them, went to college together and traveled the world together. This is a photo I'll pop up for you right here of Uncle Donald with my dad at Woodstock in 1969. And from the moment my siblings and I were born, we always referred to him as Uncle Donald. He never wound up having kids of his own, but you know, he was married and his aunt is our lovely Aunt Joanne. In 2011, Uncle Donald very quickly got leukemia and passed away. It was devastating to say the least for our family and it was just the saddest thing that's ever happened. The night after his funeral, I had a dream and he was in my dream. And I don't know about you, anytime I've ever seen a deceased loved one in a dream, I always forget in the dream that they're actually dead and it just feels normal that they're there. I've had a couple of dreams with my grandma after she's passed away and when I see her in the dream, it just feels normal that I'm with her. But in this dream, it was different because I saw Uncle Donald and I said to him, what are you doing here? You just died. And he responded to me and he said, I'm actually gonna be around for the next 10 years, so, I'm not going away just yet and I'll be at your wedding. And I was a little confused. This was 2011, so I was dating Michael at the time, but I had no idea when I was gonna marry him or if it would be within the next 10 years. I was a little confused by that. So I told his wife, I called his wife when I woke up and I was like, Aunt Joanne, Uncle Donald came to me in my dream and he told me he was gonna be here for 10 years. And she said, Lucy, that is so weird. At his funeral, I was like talking to him in my head and he said that exact same thing to me too. He said, I'm gonna be here for 10 more years. Now, every year since his passing, on his birthday, which is March 21st, something good happens for my family. We like to think of it as Uncle Donald giving us birthday gifts on his birthday. So the first birthday of his after his death, March 21st, 2012, that was my first time when I was asked to come on the Today Show, which really helped kickstart my media career. On another year on March 21st, my twin sister Allie won some sort of national finance award and it landed her her first internship in finance, which then led her to her job today. Just amazing things have happened for my family on March 21st. Michael and I wound up getting married in 2019, which was within the 10 year window as Uncle Donald suggested. So I guess he, was at our wedding. And then fast forward to 2021, it was March and Michael and I were starting to try conceiving. And I don't know if you remember all my stories about my conception journey, but I had the longest cycle ever. And I just, I ovulated way late in my cycle instead of after, you know, instead of like day 14 in the month, I ovulated around day 30. But basically it was March and I would wake up every morning and take my ovulation test and see if I was ovulating. And every day it was negative one day after the other, after the other. And it was getting frustrating because Michael and I wanted to have a baby. On March 21st, Uncle Donald's birthday on year 10. So exactly 10 years after his death, I woke up, I took my test and my ovulation test was positive. Milo was conceived in that cycle and I have since gotten confirmation from my doctor based on Milo's gestational age in all of the scans that Milo was conceived on March 21st, 2021, Uncle Donald's birthday. So I like to think that his last birthday gift to me was Milo and he planted the seed and then maybe left. It was pretty exciting on the day of Milo's birth when I was having contractions, we went to the hospital and when we got to the hospital, this man behind the front desk walked us to the elevators and then rode up with us to show us the way. 
and we looked at him in the elevator and he had a name tag on and it said Donald. And so, ooh, I just got the chills. And Milo has a little stork bite on the back of his neck. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's just like a little red spot on the back of baby's necks. And people say, it's an old wives tale, but people say that if your baby has a stork bite, it means they were kissed by an angel before they came to earth. So that's my story. I hope you liked it. It makes me very happy. Baby is asleep. It's Friday night. Ooh. Oh shit. And I'm going big with dinner. I have big plans for this meal. Here's what I'm making. Chicken soup, leftovers. Some chicken leftovers that we're gonna make with some rice. Then this little leaf lettuce. I'll be washing this and then mixing in some pepper and maybe onion. Like I'm trying to make a salad. It's gonna be a big dinner. Michael, what's your favorite part about being a dad? I choose just one thing. You think about it and you pick. That's the way he looks at me and smiles at me. What's your least favorite part? I have to do it all with you. <laughs> no, I don't know that I have a least favorite part. I do. My least favorite part of being a mom is that our whole life is on a schedule. It's fine, we'll do it for Milo. But it is a little annoying. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. It's kind of like, yeah. There's just so much stuff to do. Can I have a salad spinner, please? Thank you. I also just frequently can't believe he's ours. Yeah, I just, do you have anything else you want to say? Or no? No, thank you, I'm good. <laughs> okay. All right, off to finish this dinner. Bye, guys.